Okay, so today we're going to be writing and solving equations with just algorithms. And I'm going to show you some really good strategies to work through an equation to find the value of a variable. So in my first equation video, I taught you that an equation is like a balance. We need to have both sides equal. And so we're gonna take that into today's lesson and make sure that we are balancing that equation. So let's head over to the whiteboard to practice. All right, so here's our first example. So I've got a plus 1.65, so I'm bringing some decimals in this time. If you want to go back and watch my first video about uh, solving equations, then that might set you up for this one. So you might want to go back and watch that. Um, and it equals 5.48. And so now the thing to think about is that in the last video, we were looking at equations as a scale or a balance. One side needs to equal the other side. And so with that, knowing that if you do something to this side, you need to do that same thing to the other side is very important. So for example, I've got this positive 1.65. So if I do the opposite and I take away that amount, then I also, to make it balanced, need to take that away from the other side. And if I do that, if I've got a positive 1.65 and I go minus 1.65, I just have zero, right? And if I have zero left, I might as well not mention it over here. I might as well just put A equals and then figure out this side over here. Okay, so now I can just do a simple algorithm to figure this side out. So I'll have to do some regrouping bring down the decimal point. Okay, so now I have that A equals three and 83 hundredths. All right, here's our second example. So now I've got 2.5X, so that's my variable, equals 27.5. So what does it mean when I have a number bumped up next to a variable? What operation are we doing there? Okay, multiply. So if it's ever bumped up next to parentheses or a variable, it's always multiply. And so when we're looking at Equations like this, we always want to think about the opposite. You know, the last example we were adding, so we subtract it as the opposite. What is the opposite of multiplication? Okay, great. Division. So if I divide by 2.5, then I know if I take a number divided by itself that it equals 1. And instead of writing 1x, what can we write? Okay, you got it. Just x, right? And then over on this side, what do I have to do to keep it balanced? Good, I've got to divide by the same thing. So we're going to be doing 27.5 divided by 2.5. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to ignore the decimal points for now, and I'm just going to be thinking about uh, 25 and 275. Okay, so if I take a look, I always cover things up when I do long division, and so the 2, I don't have enough to make a group of 25, so I'm going to scoot over, and 27 is big enough, and I can make one group. I'm going to put a 1 right there. And I could put a 0 here as a placeholder. That can kind of help sometimes if you tend to get mixed up on your digits. So 25 times 1 is 25. Subtract. Bring down. And then, this one's a pretty easy one. How many groups of 25 can I make with 25? Yeah, 
exactly one. And then I come out with zero. And now I just need to figure out where my decimal point is gonna go. So if in the past, if you've been multi uh, if you've been dividing by just a whole number here, you just bring the decimal point straight up. But in this case, how many places do I have that are decimal places? Okay, I have two. And so I'm going to want to make sure my decimal place goes over one more place. So not just straight up, but another place over. And I can always check with my thinking here because if I did put it right here accidentally, I don't feel like that's going to get us a big enough answer because look, two and five tenths times one and one tenth. It sounds like it's gonna be kind of a small answer, right? Because two times one is just two. But if I move it over here, what is two times 11? Yeah, 22. So that's getting us a two digit answer. And then of course you have to keep in mind that this 0.5 is also going to get multiplied by 11. So that's going to bump it up to this number. So it makes more sense if you're just thinking about what is reasonable. Okay, so that means x equals 11. Okay, here's my next one. So a subtraction one. We've got c minus 5.21 or 5 and 21 hundredths equals 10 and 79 hundredths. So now that we have a subtraction example, what's the opposite of subtraction? Okay, you got it, addition. If I think of this as a negative number, if I add that same amount, I'm gonna get up to zero, okay? And remember that we talked about, you might as well not write the zero down. It's nothing, so we're just gonna put C equals, and then we're gonna do that same thing to the other side, you got it. And just work out the algorithm here. Nine, 10, bring the decimal straight down. Six and one. So it looks like it's just 16. And we don't really need this point zero zero, so C equals 16. Okay, great job. Okay, so here's our next or our last equation, B divided by three equals six. And if I'm doing divide by three, the first thing I think of is what is the opposite of that? Okay, you got it, multiply by three. And when we do that, you're catching on, we, div we multiply by a fraction then so that we can multiply the numerators and the denominators. And this equals three because three divided by one is, yeah, three. So on this side, we can just write it just like that. And then we're balancing this out because we're doing the same thing to both sides. And then I'll prove it over here that this works because we've got three times B is three B. One times three is three, you got it. And what is three divided by three? Yes, it's one. And I don't have to write a one if it's, you know, one B because the B represents one B. So I'm just gonna write it as B equals, and then what is six times three? You got it, 18. Okay, great job. I hope this video helps you in your math class or at home. See you next time.